Chips in a port. Lie quietly. The sun breaks gently over them. They seem asleep. A ship tied to the shore is a dormant thing. She's built for the open water, and without it she has no real existence, no sense of purpose, no movement, to be closely controlled by the crisp voices of command. lamp is lit in all authorized spaces. Now, Reveille. For seamen, each new day in port is a time of continuing preparation, a time of planning for the return to the sea. When these ships cut their ties to the land, their every movement will be dependent on their own communications. And that's a special challenge to every communications officer aboard. Two of those officers are new in their jobs. Assigned to this destroyer escort is Ensign Don Elliott. Hey, come on, what you say? You want to eat? A few minutes from now. Ensign Elliott knows his ship. He's been aboard for a year. But he's just been appointed communications officer. Across the harbor, on another kind of ship that riders are fond of calling a floating city, is another junior officer whose primary duty concern is communications. See you, child, Jeff. Okay. Ensign Jeff Carter is the new signal officer, just one of seven communications officers aboard. Both men are in communications. Their work and their responsibilities, however, are as different as the ships on which they serve. On a destroyer, the junior officer accepts full responsibility for communications. He stands alone. On an aircraft carrier, the junior officer is one member of an officer team. Other situations will have special characteristics as each ship has its own peculiarities. But the destroyer and the carrier officer between them encounter the whole range of shipboard communications duties. All hands to quarters for muster, inspection, and instruction. OC Division, attention to quarters. Listen up for muster. Rankin. Here. Ferguson. Here. The OC Division. Reynolds. The signalmen and radio men who make communications work. Aboard a destroyer, the communications officer is their division officer. Just one of his duties. Spears. Very well. The only big work projects we have uh, prior to getting underway next week are mainly our antennas. We have to ensure that all our antennas are cleaned, especially the insulators, make sure that they're measured. There's a few topside areas that we're going to have to get painted uh, prior to getting underway next week. I don't see any big problems, so uh, everything should be ship shape when we get underway. Stand at ease until a division officer returns from officer's call. OC Division, attention to quarters. Good morning, sir. Much has been taken. All men are present and accounted for, sir. Very well. She's already gone over here what has to be done for upcoming deployment. It's like to emphasize the point that during this... Ensign Don Elliott is responsible for people as well as equipment. And the people are the harder to maintain of the two. It's his job to be sure they're properly trained, organized, directed, and motivated. That's quite a responsibility for the only communications officer aboard. Pass on to the other men. They're on watch right now. That's all I have, Chief. Very well. OC Division, post... Aboard the carrier, 
Jeff Carter has many of the same responsibilities. Good morning, sir. CS Division Law President Collins, sir. Very well. Hooray, Russ. Division. Hooray. Russ. Morning, man. This morning I'd like to talk about special requests. Ensign Carter is a division officer, too. One of the advantages that goes with being signal officer. No two men handle this job quite the same way. Jeff sees his biggest challenge as motivating people, helping each man feel his job is important, even if he's just a messenger. You cooperate with your immediate supervisor, and it's equally as important for you supervisors to stop and consider carefully when you sign a chit, because it'll be concurred with 99% of the time. That's all. Working day begins for radio men aboard the carrier. Standing on. They must tune their many transmitters and receivers, following a frequency plan prepared by the senior communications officer. It tells them which frequency to put up, on which channel, of which equipment. As many as 60 receiving and transmitting frequencies may be needed when a carrier is to sail as part of a task force with an admiral and an air group aboard. Okay, what do you got, Liver? I'm bringing up the new uh, ship's coordination frequency for the bridge here. Okay, is there anything else you want me to do? Yeah, would you check it down there, please? Okay. Ensign Carter is just one of the communications officers supervising all this. Yes, sir, if any else, I'll Thank you. Aboard the DE, Ensign Elliot is personally responsible for the frequency plan and for all communication. Got the frequency plan right now, and the captain had mentioned something about having a screen come and going on the bridge instead of CIC. Would it be any problem? No, sir. All I have to do is unpatch it from combat and uh, put it on RHS number five on the bridge, sir. Okay, and I'll tell the captain he can have it. Yes, sir. No problem. I'm going to listen to the broadcast frequencies right now. Everything here, of course, is on a much smaller scale with far less equipment. You're not going to put tug control in the status port, are you? No, sir. An ensign, or JG, is the only communications officer. Are we missing any broadcast numbers? Uh, no, sir. A carrier may have eight. Have any trouble bringing up the comm say? No, sir. I'm saying over right now. You hold the sync okay in a broadcast? Yes, sir. Ensign Elliot ends up doing a lot of jobs that on a larger ship are divided among several people. One of these is visiting the Communications Security Materiel Issuing Office to make his monthly draw, most of it highly classified publications. Hi, how are you today? Just fine, thank you. Can I let you know I can bear Okay. Here's your 10. Would you sign the logbook, please? Okay, you can go in now. Thank you. Good morning. How are you today? Here, the communications officer gets the cryptographic materials that are needed to break coded messages, along with other new communications information. Thank you. What's your next number? Three, zero, 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 five. New crypto material is constantly being issued, and a ship can't read the radio traffic unless it has the latest decoding information. Just copy for you. Here's a rule for you to follow along, sir. Is that read? ARTC 406 Alpha Alpha, one time. Without a new stack of material each month, the ship could not communicate. It would be out of business. The communications officer has the sole responsibility for getting the right information, absorbing it, and using it during the overseas deployment coming up. The carrier, too, is preparing to sail, and that even steps up the tempo of work for the officer of the deck. Standing the OOD watch is one of Ensign Carter's duties in port. The job demands a complete knowledge of the ship, of what's happening, and of how to get things done aboard. 
Sir, the engine crew requests permission to jack over number one shaft. Permission denied until the divers have completed their work. Yes, sir. The Admiral's car is on the pier, sir. Thank you. Post me. Six bombs, com card is six, arriving. Yes, sir. Before departure, the carrier conducts radio checks on all frequencies. Lakewood, Lakewood, this is Dancer. Radio check, over. Across the harbor, the Lakewood, DE responds Lakewood, Dancer, and runs her check, own over. checks. Dancer, this is Lakewood. Roger, over. The landlines that have been providing communications in port are severed. It's a sign of what lies ahead. The ships communicating on their own depending solely on their own equipment, as they will for the weeks to come at sea. Deployment day. A task force is about to put to sea. big ships, every officer has a specific job, which may or may not demand his immediate attention on sailing day. On a destroyer, every officer has a number of jobs, but whatever his assignment, he's a ship's officer first, a specialist after that. Check off list is completed, sir. Ship is ready to get underway. All stations taking all lines. All The traditional signs of a ship dropping her ties to the land. These are a part of Ensign Elliott's responsibility as his ship moves out to join the task force. Ships are on their own now, except for communication. More than 5,000 men here, a few hundred on each destroyer, with communications linking ship to ship and ships to shore, all the way across the world if necessary. Last buoys are cleared. The seagoing routines begin. On the destroyer escort, Ensign Elliott makes the round of his spaces. He doesn't stand watch on Radio Central. On a small ship, that's done by petty officers. But Don spends much of the day here, making sure that all goes smoothly. Most messages to the ship come in by teletype, 
on what's called the fleet broadcast. They are sent encrypted, but automatically decoded by equipment aboard ship. From the hundreds of messages intercepted every day, the radio men must pull out the few addressed to their own ship. Things like operation orders, orders for transfer, supply information, personal telegrams, and general Navy business. Other teletypes on the encrypted Orestes net clatter out messages between ships in the task force. Over a speaker comes the crackling hum of an international distress frequency. Any urgent mayday from a ship or aircraft in trouble would be heard here, alerting the crew to action. Other circuits are routed from communications to patch panels to various parts of the ship. Voice tactical circuits to the bridge. All uniform, this is Golden Warrior. Execute to follow. X-ray, Romeo, two, Charlie, five, TAC, six. Combat Break. information circuits Zero. to CIC. Scooter one five, this is Lakewood. Vector one two zero four, bogey over. A time signal to the chart house. Don Elliott is responsible for it all. Responsible for the equipment and the people. Any ship is worthless as a fighting machine unless the operational commanders can communicate with it. Don's job is to make sure they always can. Remember, sometimes this afternoon the Commodore has a communication drill scheduled. I like all the circuits for you. Yes, sir. of communications, fast action, immediate response are marks of an efficient ship. A ship is judged by these standards, as it is by how well it keeps station, by the skill of its maneuvering. These are the things the Commodore or the Admiral will notice and remember. Right standard rudder, steady course 231. Right standard rudder, aye, right, sir. My rudder's right standard, coming to canoe course 231, sir. Very well. As communications officer, Ensign Elliott sees every message addressed to the ship, and every message transmitted from it. It's one of the ways he ensures the quality of his division's work. One of the ways he makes sure that on his ship, communication is the voice of command. Excuse me, Captain. Message board. Don, what time does the Commodore have a schedule for flag hoist drill? Sometime this afternoon, sir. I'll find out the exact time. Schedule for 1400. Make sure your people are ready. All right, sir. I'll be there myself. Many old seafaring traditions still survive in the modern Navy. And that's nowhere more true than in the wardroom. Who eats at which sitting? Who eats where? When you start and when you may leave. It's all prescribed by tradition. On the aircraft carrier, Jeff Carter may sit down at each meal with an entirely new group. With some 400 officers on board, sheer numbers and variations in duty hours make a few of the old traditions impractical. All kinds of people to meet. Jet pilots, language experts, intelligence officers, and who have been stationed in exotic places. And, of course, it depends on what you want to take the scenic route or the pleasure route. Pleasure route sounds interesting. That's uh, a good route. Good route. <laughs> That's good. Coffee, sir. Oh, no, thank you. Excuse me. I have to go on watch. 
As a junior officer in communications, Jeff Carter is a watchstander. He's not always available for after-hours activities. For the next four hours, Henson Carter will be in charge of an incredible array of equipment and a highly skilled team of some 30 men. Good afternoon, Don. Hi, Jeff. Ready to leave you. Okay, let me fill you in on the watch. Relieving the watch follows a ritual. What are you terminated with? Jeff What's Carter has to absorb a myriad of details before he assumes the duties as communications watch officer, or CWO. Because of that, we've got a backlog of one immediate... The main job of a CWO is to keep communications flowing. And it's not as simple as it may sound. There are hundreds of equipment items to worry about. Thousands of knobs for patching signals around the radio spaces and to other parts of the ship. And just one of them set wrong can lead to havoc. Messages churn through here at rates as high as one or two every minute, nonstop. Not just traffic for the ship, but for the air group as well. And even more important, for the Admiral and his staff. What's the status of communications at this time? I'm ready to turn the watch over to you unless you have any further questions. No, I believe you. Okay, have a good watch. Thank you. The job of communications watch officer is unique among the junior officers aboard ship. All the message traffic for everyone aboard passes across this desk. From it, Jeff Carter and the other CWOs get to understand the big picture. They know what's going on and why. They know how the changing world situation affects the task force, the fleet, and the nation. It's one of the things that brings a great sense of contribution to this job. So we just got a top secret message, and it's a personal message to the admiral. Okay, thank you. Some messages require special handling. They have to be decrypted separately in the crypto room, where only the watch officer and a few selected personnel may enter. And this one will have to be delivered to the Admiral personally by Ensign Carter. still having broadcast problems. We have to maintain their guard. All right, Chief. We'll keep their guard and send anything for them on TGO. I'll check with Warren Officer Everhart and see if we can send Petty Officer Lumo over in the morning. Give him a hand. Okay, the problems they are having right now is crypto problems. Crypto? Okay, Lumo would be the one for that. Then. Thank you very much. Besides the responsibility for his own ship, the communications watch officer on a flagship also shares the communications responsibility for the entire task force. General Quarters, General Quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Now this is a drill, this is a drill. General Quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Aboard the D.E., Henson Don Elliott's GQ station is in the pilot house. Here he exercises his prime responsibility, tactical communications aboard his ship. Messages may come by blinker, on flag hoists, or over voice radio. Lakewood, this is Golden Warrior. Immediate execute. Romeo Uniform 2, TAC 3-4. I say again, Romeo Uniform 2, TAC 3-4. Stand by. Execute. Over. This is Lakewood. Roger out. The communications officer consults his signal book to interpret the message, then relays it to the commanding officer. Yes, I break the last signal from the OTC to read. Exercise the surface gunnery. Very well. CIC concurs. Close up Bravo. Starboard side. Close up Bravo. Starboard side. Carrier, 
Ensign Jeff Carter's GQ station is the signal bridge. He supervises the passing of flag signals to the entire task force. Signal bridge gone. Put up in all ships, signal by flag hoist. Echo, X-ray, two, tack, two, five, X-ray. Signal bridge, aye. Right. Signalman, port and starboard wing. Stand by your bags. Hoist the following signal close up. And two, Delta, tack, echo, X-ray, two, tack, two, five, X-ray. Assignment as a communications officer means a rare opportunity to demonstrate the qualities demanded of an officer and to do it in full view of your superior. The opportunity is there on every type of ship. The work may vary. The responsibilities will differ. But communications are always vital in this modern Navy. Whether you're the only communications officer aboard or serving as part of an officer team, Hi, Jeff. a communications you. assignment will put you a step ahead in your career. On the small ship, you'll have more responsibility than most people take on in a lifetime. You'll have variety, too. Good job, Crater. And a chance to prove yourself in a demanding situation. On the larger vessel, you also have your share of responsibility, and you'll learn to work as part of a team. You'll take full charge of one phase of communications, probably affecting an entire task force. It always pays to be close to the top, and communications is the voice of command. <laughs>